Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, and as you can possibly see, let me tip you down a little bit, as you can possibly see, I am doing a little bit of wiring on the Fairmont. In fact, I'm doing all the wiring on the Fairmont, and one of the things that I'm doing while doing this wiring is I'm doing an inordinate amount of connectors and crimping those connectors, so I thought I would do a quick tutorial on how to crimp connectors. Let's start with the types of connectors that are out there. Now these... This set of uh, connectors is probably something that you're used to. These are very common. You can pick them up virtually anywhere. One of the things that I've been using that I like to use are these type of connectors that come with shrink tube as part of the assembly. So um, not only do these uh, make a connection, but they also have shrink tube around the outside so that when you're done making that connection, you can close up that shrink tube and make a nice sealed connection. You know, all different types of these, you know, little eyelets, things like that. Here's something else I'd like to point out real quick. Make sure that you're using the correct sized connector for the wire that you're using. As you can see, this is like has a larger opening for this larger wire, but if you try to use this smaller wire in here or vice versa, it doesn't necessarily work out so well. I've also come to find out that electrical terminals seem to be universal as far as the color coding. So like the yellow, what, what you see here is 12 to 10, and the blue is 16 to 14, and red is like 22 to 16. And wire gauges are weird uh, in that they, the lower you go, the, the bigger the wire, the larger the conductor, but even as you can see across all these connectors, it seems to ring true as far as the wire size is concerned. Those are the main connectors that I've been using during the course of this, but there are two main types when you go to uh, select your tool and the type of crimp that you're going to do, and that is insulated connector and non-insulated connector. You can see that this one here is just bare metal and this one has insulation around the outside of it, and that's very important for how you approach these. So you want to make sure that uh, you know what type of connector or terminal that you're working with when you go to crimp it. Now that we've been introduced to the types of connectors, next let's talk about the tools. And I've got to say the biggest takeaway for this whole video is going to be using the proper tools for crimping. I cannot stress that enough. If you don't have the proper tools, your crimps are not going to come out all that great and you may have poor electrical connections as a result. The main one that I use is this guy here. And this, this thing is awesome. It has interchangeable dies. So in other words, you can swap out the business end of these for different uh, types of dies, depending upon what you may be working on. I've got that in there backwards. Depending upon what you're working on, these are interchangeable. In fact, this tool comes with several different dies, and they're all listed up here in the type of uh, wires or connectors that you would use them for, and they're all numbered. So this number here corresponds with the number on the die itself. This is has been my go-to tool during this process it's also ratcheting and and locks in place and all that kind of stuff i often use this one too this is uh, just a straight up crimping tool in fact this one i like to use a lot on these types you can use this one on insulated and non-insulated although i will admit that it works much better in the non-insulated form and then lastly a good wire stripper. This is the one that I use and there are different types. There's those plier types that you can crimp and then just sort of slide off. But the thing to avoid is using side cutters. And you don't want to like take a pair of side cutters to strip the wires when you do this because, well, it, it can damage things and also pull out little bits of the wire. And these are things that you want to avoid. So you want to keep as much of the wire inside of it as possible. And I will say this really quick. Uh, I have found when you're working with wire, I have found that there's a couple of different grades of wire. Now this is what I'm referring to. These are two 18 gauge wires. And the one on the right seems to not have the same amount of conductor as the one on the left. The one on the left, at least to me, seems to have more conductor. So at least, at least that's what I'm seeing here. And this is something that I've seen a little bit when looking for wire. So when you're looking for wire, uh, make sure it's good wire. First, we gotta start by uh, stripping. Well, how about we do this? How about we start by making a joint between these two? This is, I believe, a piece of 10 gauge wire. So step one will be to strip away some of the wire. Now my strippers like have this little sliding thing on the inside here, and so you can basically set the depth of what you want. And for these type of connectors, I like around a quarter of an inch. 
So not that much, just a little bit. And look, right there is some of the stuff I, I told you that you should try and avoid, the way it pulls the wire out. Sometimes these strippers do that. And since we're doing this for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna let it go for now. As I mentioned, there are other type of strippers. I use this one because it's just an easy one pull action kind of thing. But I also have uh, another type, like I mentioned here. Uh, you can use this one in the same way. You just, well, I wanna get the appropriate length. And that left a nice clean edge. In fact, cleaner than the other one. You can try this one too. I think because this piece of wire is so short, it did that. But point is, is uh, there are different options. And you know, if I were to go back and do what I did uh, again, I would have used these strippers instead. And we'll use this uh, connector here. And what you'll notice, I give it a little twist. Different people do this different ways. So before they even insert the wire into the connector, what they will do is they will solder this and sort of tin it up before it ever goes into the, into the barrel here. I say if you want to do that, fine. Is it necessary? Nah, nah, it's hard to say. Um, some people will say it is and some people won't. But the important thing is, is when you look at this, that you can see how the insulation is practically bottomed out against the conductor on the inside of that. That's why only that quarter inch. You don't want the wire hanging out to the edge here. So you want it as close to this as you possibly can. In fact, uh, if I trim this up a little more and made that insulation join up with that, it would be even better. Now I have already loaded up my tool with the proper die to do this crimping. And since it's 10 gauge, I'm gonna put it in the 10 gauge slot. Hopefully you can see that there. I am not all the way to the edge and I'm not all the way to the middle. So in other words, I'm not going for the middle. I'm gonna do two crimps. I'm gonna do one on one side and one on the other. But once again, proper tool, super important here. Also, be careful of over crimping because that can damage the insulation. And I have a solution for that should you run into it. Now that you've got it in the tool, just close it down. And when you reach that point, it should, there we are. And then once you've got it together, give it a good tug and make sure it's in there securely. And this one is, so real happy with that. I'm just gonna do the other side now. And I'll keep it pointed towards you so you can actually watch the action. And that last one I did was probably borderline over crimped. The one I just did felt much better, yeah. So that's pretty darn close right there. But as you can see, it's a nice tight connection. It's not going anywhere. And it's a good electrical connection as well. Now, in the past, whenever I dealt with shrink tube, I would take my lighter and I would just go underneath and apply heat. But when I did that, that would leave some sooty residue on the outside and it wouldn't look as professional. So I've switched to a heat gun. You can also use, they have different attachments that go on different types of soldering irons. My butane one has like a little attachment with a little piece of metal that loops around uh, to add heat to things like this. But once again, uh, you can use a lighter, but this looks and works so much better. And I can tell when it's done because you start to see the wire through the insulation. In fact, it's almost like you can watch little bubbles come out. You can actually watch it seal. So when you see the insulation clearly through, or when you see the wire clearly through the insulation, you're there. And that, are two wires joined together quite handily. Now, say for instance you over crimped it, and I did in a couple of spots while I was working on the car. What over crimping will cause is you will see that the uh, metal protrudes through the insulation here. So the way I combated that is I got a piece of shrink tube and I cut it to size, and I just slid it over, the, well actually I got a bigger, bigger size than this, but I slid it over the outside of it and then I ran the shrink tube down and that sealed everything up real nice. So if you mess up, you can always go back and add some shrink tube and that certainly helps. Let's show a different type. Now let's talk about this type. So this is a non-insulated type and this is probably one that people would have the most difficulty with. 
can't stress enough, I'm going to go back to this often in this video, the correct tool makes all the difference here. First thing I'll do, or first thing I'm going to need to do here is change out my die. Now this die is specifically made for working with these type of connectors and it actually would fit in like this. So we're, we're working with 10 gauge wire. And the way you know which way this fits in here is you see that little, that little hump, that little peak that comes down like that, that directs the metal back down into itself. So when you put these in, they need to be inserted like this, but also note that there's a wider section and a narrower section. And there's two parts to this connector. There's this narrow section in here, which needs to come in contact with the conductor and this other section out here, which needs to come in contact with the insulation. So when you put the wire, into this, it should look like that. So not too much wire sticking down into here. In fact, I, I could shorten that up a little more. But that's, that's what you're looking for when you're working with this type of connector. And what you would use this for is like, uh, I've been using these for my relays. Now when I'm wiring up my relays, these go into the back of the relay. So they're not insulated because they go into a cavity or something like that and, and hook up. So I'll put this die in. And I just like to check to make sure it's aligned and everything before I ever get started. What I sometimes do, like some of these are spread apart really wide, is I might just get them started and just narrow them up just a little bit just to make sure that they're ready to go. Then I will actually place it in the tool and since we're working with 10 gauge wire, we're on this outer one, see this 10 to 12 gauge wire? Hopefully you can see that. So I'll, I'll put it in the die and I'll make sure that I'm in there correctly. So the big ends in the back and we're all set. So I'll, I'll basically get the tool ready to go. Then I'll take my wire and I'll put it in the back side here. And there you have a perfectly, well, almost perfectly. I, I got a little bit of insulation in there. The idea is to have nothing but conductor here and nothing but insulation here. Once again, a nice tight connection, but there's no way to do this without the proper tool. I can't stress that enough, but that's a good connection. That'll pass. Let's do one last one. Taking off a quarter inch of insulation here. We've switched back to insulated, so we've got to change out our die again. With these, insulated. Maybe a little bit of the conductor is sticking out just so that you know that the conductor is seated down inside that connector. And when I put this in here, these are split at the top right here. So what I'll do is I'll push down on the split side and I'll take the other side and put it down into that cradle. See how it's cradled in there like that? And then when it, the tool comes down on it, you can see it. Uh, right. Avoid over crimping. And I was right on the ragged edge of it there, but certainly made it. And there we go. Got a nice tight connection. I mentioned earlier about soldering before you ever putting it in, put it into the connector and do any crimping. That, I'm not going to say that that's a bad thing at all. But some people like to solder uh, after the fact, which is uh, what I'll do for you now. To solder this, we'll start by tinning the tip a little bit. You want to heat everything up. You don't want to just heat the solder. You don't want to just blob it on there. You want to try and heat everything up. Whoa. In fact, that little blob of solder might just work out. You want it to soak down into the wire and you also want it to uh, bond to the actual connector itself. Oop. All done. Was that necessary? I'm going to leave that up to you, but it will help the connection as far as soldering before you put it into the connector. I'm going to say that's also okay. I'm just, the most important thing, the thing that I want you to walk away with from this video is the tools. The tools make all the difference. All of my connections and everything were crap until I started using the right tools. And that's what I'm trying to share with you here today. Well, I hope you found that information enlightening and possibly entertaining. Now, as to the question of to solder or not to solder, I'm going to leave that up to you. I haven't been soldering. If you, I feel that if you have a good crimped connection that soldering is not required, but 
if it makes you feel better and you like doing it, I say go ahead and do it, but I'm not going to be the one to dictate what you do. Uh, the important thing is here, the main takeaway, proper tools. The proper tools are going to make all the difference and avoid over crimping and that's something that's going to come with time. I'll link all the tools and stuff that I use in the description. I'll also put a link to a video I did about soldering wires that you may find useful in the description as well. Uh, but know that this kind of thing gets done one wire at a time. It's very tedious and time consuming, but you know what? It can be very relaxing and cathartic at the same time as well. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask you to head over to ericthecarguy.com. I'll put a link to that down in the description. If you are subscribed to Eric the Car Guy, I ask that you click the little bell icon so that you're notified when I post new videos. Aside from that, be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.